And now, I would like to introduce the salutatorian of the class of 2015, Eric Fliegoff. Thank you, Dr. McLeod. I'm extremely honored to speak to all of you, but especially to the class of 2015. When I didn't know where to start with the speech, I began by asking for advice. I was told on numerous occasions to do an interpretive dance, but frankly, there's no way you can handle these moves. <laughs> but from writing too many college applications and scholarship essays, I've learned one important tip about writing. The only way to write is to write about what you think, not necessarily what you think your audience wants to hear. So, here we are at graduation, and I'm thinking about, of all things, seventh grade field day. I know, this is supposed to be a happy, exciting occasion, and you don't want to think about your awkward phase. But just picture it. You're wearing the kind of sunscreen that makes you look like Slender Man, but not really Slender Man because you're in a chubby phase, but even so, you're certain that your bathing suit will fall down. I want to know who thought that busing 300 overeager seventh graders to the laborers' training camp and replacing their self-confidence with sugar was a good idea. <laughs> but here's what you never realize until six years later when your salutatorian is dredging up repressed adolescent memories at a celebration of how far you've come since then. Nobody was looking at you. Nobody. Remember the imaginary audience from psych class? When you're in middle school, you think that everybody's watching you and judging you. It turns out they aren't. They're too busy worrying about themselves. You're either in a popularity struggle or you're like me, definitely not cool, but trying to fit in. I remember my inner monologue going 100 miles per hour. Should I play basketball? Cool kids play basketball, but I can't even dribble. <laughs> the best part of high school for me was the disappearance of that imaginary audience. It came from maturity, and it came from going to school with such a nice class. I mean that I think one of our class's best qualities is that for the most part, we're really, really nice to one another. I don't have an imaginary audience right now, but I do have a real one. And counterintuitively, that's less frightening. Because I can tell you that come this fall, I'll be that nervous seventh grader all over again looking for a place to sit with my chocolate milk and my hot dog that could literally bounce three, three feet in the air. Remember that? Yeah. Except everyone around me will be trying to grab the best internships or solve world hunger or defend their international jiu-jitsu titles. They won't share memories of bouncing hot dogs or scarring field days. Worse, they might not all be so nice. I'll be stuck in the freshman dining hall as if nothing has changed except for getting my braces off and maybe you will too. In three months, this very real crowd will blur to the imaginary. That's when we can bring back this imaginary audience, all of us and especially our classmates. Together, we all figured out how to laugh at ourselves when we spilled chocolate milk, how to sit down and strike up a conversation, how to invite over the awkward kid who's still standing up and who's probably me. <laughs> I'm not here to say, that we'll always be this united, a family to always fall back on. Frankly, this moment may be the most united we will ever be, but we're hillers, we're tough as hills, or something. <laughs> so, in each of our respective colleges, or wherever we may be in the future, whenever we're feeling alone, which will happen, except at UMass Amherst, as Nick, pa <laughs> as Nick Ponce already said when he stole my joke two nights ago, uh, maybe we can think back to right now. Call up this exact invisible audience and take comfort in the fact that everyone else in the dining hall is feeling the exact same way. Take comfort that Hopkinton High School has ensured that nobody could ever be more prepared for college than we are. And take comfort in the fact that wherever we may be, it isn't seventh grade field day. Thank you.